What are you waiting on right now? Uh, we're not talking like an Amazon package or something that you know is going to come immediately. Uh, what is a longing that you've been having that you may have given up on? Uh, the season of Advent is all about waiting, and this season our theme is called The Witness of Waiting. And so we're going to be studying uh, some of the major figure, figures in the very opening of Luke, uh, and that's, that's going to be our series. So tell us more about that, Kira. Yeah, so we've done these Advent videos before, but we're doing something a little different this time. We're going to do one video, and then the rest will be having will be doing live with an in-studio audience <laughs> on Sunday morning. So we're really excited for you to join us with that. So we're looking at this big story of Scripture where we have Old Testament figures where God is always speaking pretty openly and straightforwardly to His people. When we get to the New Testament, though, there's been 400 years of silence. So God's people have just been waiting and waiting and waiting. And today we want to look at the life of Elizabeth mm -hmm. and how she is someone who kind of embodies this waiting for God and then God stepping into her story in a really real way. Mm -hmm. That's right. There's this generational waiting for 400 years, but also that waiting is evident in her very personal, intimate life. And so uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. So uh, there's four main figures that we are going to be talking about in the four weeks of Advent. And we're starting with Elizabeth, even though Elizabeth isn't the very first figure to be mentioned, uh, but she's the, one, the first one that speaks. And so that's what we're going to start with her today. Um, and so just a little bit uh, context, uh, this is a first century Greco-Roman time period and uh, we are immediately brought into the story of Zechariah and uh, Elizabeth and they are barren and they're growing older in age, which kind of is a theme that you see throughout the Bible. Um, but here at this moment, uh, it seems like there is no hope uh, mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. at this point. What's interesting to me, um, when we are talking through this story, we we're trying to decide, should we start with Zechariah or should we start with Elizabeth? Zechariah is the one that gets to hear from the angel. So the angel comes and says, we've heard your prayers. God is doing something about this. You're going to have a baby. Mm -hmm. And Zechariah is like, we are past that stage. <laughs> we've given up hope on that. That's not going to happen for us anymore. And then he is rendered mute. He can't speak. God shuts off his mouth. Mm -hmm. So the first time that we actually hear somebody responding to this with faith, it's Elizabeth and she's already pregnant. Yeah. And so then she says, this is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's five months after she's conceived. So she's already second trimester mm -hmm. and now we get to hear from her. Um, God has done this and I've actually conceived and um, all of this waiting that has been going on, not just before being able to get pregnant, but also the waiting of going through that first trimester mm -hmm. and all the risks of that. Now she's kind of in that moment and she's saying, I can see God is doing something mm -hmm. here. That's right. That's right. Uh, and she says, God has done this. You yes. know, it's not, it's not a result of her putting in the work or, or uh, having the right amount of mm -hmm. faith or anything like that. And God's not rewarding her for yeah. that. It is completely gift. It's completely yes. grace. And, and she doesn't get an angel. Yeah, she doesn't get an angel. That's right. right. That's so right. she is looking at what God has done. She names it. And you know, we're not told in the story if her husband kind of tried to mime out for her. You know, <laughs> I had this divine visitation. <laughs> um, so we're not sure how much knowledge she has of what actually happened, but she can see it literally growing yeah. in her. And yeah. so she can see God is has turned to them and um, has given them a child. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And then uh, she also talks about this disgrace being removed from mm -hmm. her, yeah. um, that, that she has been brought into um, a, a new instance of grace mm -hmm. uh, from this pregnancy, yeah. which is uh, not necessarily how that registered mm -hmm. for our ears in the modern era, right. I would say. Um, but uh, in this time period, that's it, it, it was a, a situation of disgrace. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think also, you know, a lot of my friends who um, have struggled with infertility, 
there is just so much pain mm. around that. And then when you add, you know, maybe you do conceive, then you have a miscarriage, the pain of that. And she's walked through that. Yeah. And we don't, we're not told how many times or how old she was, but you can think of all of these years of waiting and pain. And now she's pregnant and it's going well. Mm -hmm. um, and this isn't just a sign for them, for their, just their little family of God's grace, but we're told next that the angel that appears to Mary uses Elizabeth as a sign. That's right. So Elizabeth becomes this witness of waiting in her own family and then also to her extended family, mm -hmm. you know, her cousin, Mary. That's right. And the angel says, I'm telling you that God is going to do something for you, Mary. He's already done it for your cousin Elizabeth. You thought it would never happen. We all thought it would never happen. They're too old. And now she's pregnant. And Mary rushes over to see them. Yeah, it says with haste she yes. went and visited. Yeah. And so Elizabeth speaks immediately to, to Mary in the passage. And she offers a blessing mm -hmm. to Mary. And then a blessing... Uh, to her baby Jesus, and mm -hmm. then this other blessing that kind of encompasses yes. everybody in the picture. Yeah, let me Mary read that. Mary and Elizabeth. Yeah, please read it for us. Then Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And we're not told, you know, is she blessing Mary, saying, you're the one who believed that God would fulfill his word? Is she blessing herself, saying, God now fulfilled his word to me? Or is it a bigger blessing? I think it might be all three of those things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But there's this kind of threefold benediction, blessing Mary blessing Jesus, and then blessing all of the women who are going to follow their footsteps and believe mm -hmm. that God will fulfill His Word to them. Absolutely. And that last blessing really kind of captures an Advent perspective of yes. we were waiting. We were waiting on God's promise. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's two uh, waitings here. We're waiting on Christ to be born uh, alongside mm -hmm. the, the New Testament characters, but also we were waiting for Christ to return. Yes. And so that's the promise God has mm -hmm. made to us. Mm -hmm. And we are waiting in that. And blessed are we who are waiting that mm -hmm. trust that God will fulfill mm -hmm. that promise. And it's such a perfect image, I think, a pregnant woman for Advent mm. because it's this already but not yet. So already you are with child and you have not met this child yet. So already we know that Jesus was born, that he lived, died, was resurrected for us. We know that story and we're waiting for the fulfillment of that story in the same way that Mary and Elizabeth are waiting for the birth of their children mm -hmm. in this story. That's right. That's exactly right. And that's, that, that is faith encompassed yeah. in the waiting, mm -hmm. in the witnessing to the way that God has already been mm -hmm. faithful to us. Um, that's, uh, that's what Advent's all about. And that's what we're trying to talk about this season yeah. of Advent, witnessing in the waiting. Mm -hmm. This is how God has acted. This is mm -hmm. what God has done as we are waiting, mm -hmm. um, and that should give us a lot of hope. Yeah. You know? So after this, we have Mary responding, then Elizabeth um, goes home, she has her baby, and uh, Zechariah and her trying to figure out what to name the baby, and the last thing we get to hear from Elizabeth in this story is the baby's going to be named John. Mm -hmm. And we looked it up, and that actually means graced by God, mm. which is such a beautiful name for her to claim over her child. Um, and you can kind of see, maybe this is reading into it, but there's this growing confidence, I think, as you, you know, for the beginning of the story, we don't hear from Elizabeth at all. Mm -hmm. And then the first words we hear is looking at what God has done for her then she's blessing Mary, and then she's claiming this grace of yeah. God in her son. So as we're kind of thinking about that, we're going to talk about this more next week mm -hmm. um, on Sunday when we're looking at Zechariah. But as we're looking at our own lives, I think it can be easy for us to look at it and think, I need to find the faith to make something happen. Mm -hmm. If I believe hard enough, God will do something for me. Um, 
or when something bad happens, to look back and try to um, figure out why it happened or look ahead and figure out what's the good that's going to come mm -hmm. out of it. And I think this is a story that's showing us it's not making sense of it, but it's looking for the grace yeah. in the story. Yeah, and there's grace all the way down. Mm -hmm. In the waiting, mm -hmm. yeah. in the long period of waiting, there's grace. Yeah. In the witnessing, the actual mm -hmm. uh, gift being given yeah. to you, there's a grace. And yeah. then in the proclaiming of the blessing, mm -hmm and in enjoying the gift. Yeah. There's grace all the way yeah. down. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, something we can try to cultivate over this season of Advent is uh, being mindful of the grace, whatever your season is. It could be a very dry season of waiting, but there's still grace in there. Christ is still with you. Um, there's still a gift in that. Um, but it's also there, and it's easier to see in those moments where you're witnessing it actually happening mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's when you're proclaiming it to others. And it's this kind of interplay, this dance between that. But it is all grace, all the way down. Yeah, I was in a class yesterday and we were talking about the shift of um, being able to witness the grace given to other people and rejoice in mm -hmm. it. And so, you know, in this story, Elizabeth would have had to suffer through watching all of the people around her getting pregnant all the time. and. Part of, I think, the, the shift of knowing I am a beloved child of God yeah. is I can rejoice in your rejoicing and I can ask you to you know, weep with me when I am weeping and that's part of what we're doing together. Mm -hmm. So as we wait, we're, we're sharing the burden of that waiting together, mm -hmm. whether it's a joyful anticipation kind of waiting, whether it's the slow, dry suffering mm -hmm. season, that's part of us sharing and that waiting mm -hmm. together. And that sharing in itself is a grace in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And there's something really profound and beautiful and it takes somebody coming to highlight that for mm -hmm. you often to, to mm -hmm. feel that grace, to understand that blessing mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and I just love this joyful, you know, you can look up paintings where Elizabeth and Mary greet each other and there's this amazing recognition of God has done something in both of our lives that was so unexpected. Mm -hmm. We didn't think, Mary didn't ever think she was going to be the, the mother of God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no one would ever think that. <laughs> yep. And Elizabeth had been waiting for so long, maybe she had given up hope that something would happen. Mm -hmm. um, but they're both in this moment of grace, in mm -hmm. this image, yeah. yeah. And this is kind of one angle into this story. Exactly. And we're going to be talking about four different angles over the mm -hmm. next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about Elizabeth this week. Next week we're talking about Zechariah, right? So we're going to see kind of the parallel of this story. It's going to add some more texture and color mm -hmm. into it. And then we'll um, talk about Mary, you know, yeah. the mother of God. And then we're also going to talk about Anna, who uh, does not have a song in the Bible, um, but uh, she uh, prophesies um, when Christ is born. And so that's... Uh, that's going to be a really special thing mm -hmm. that we get to think through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before we let you go, we want you to know that there is a link at the end of this video uh, to some special musical pieces that uh, our community has uh, put together. So we're really excited to share that with you. So uh, I think that does it for our show today. Thank you for uh, tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next week. On Sunday. <laughs>